Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge and welcome to this video. Uh, it's not quite a day two of the Novation Peak just yet. I've got actually two or three um, pieces of music that are in progress uh, with the peak, um, but they're taking a little bit longer than I anticipated to finish. So I need to spend a little bit more time on them before I can then put the video together and show you uh, what I'm doing and, and the sounds that I'm making with the peak. So uh, this particular video is looking at the day one uh, Novation Peak video that I did before and looking at the song um, that I just presented in that video. And what I thought I'd do here is to take a look at it, uh, look at the structure of it, talk a bit about how I put it together um, and most importantly look at some of the patches that I used um, for that particular song. So uh, that's what I'm going to do here. I've got Cubase running um, with the project uh, loaded up. Uh, I've got another camera uh, which is uh, pointing towards the innovation. Um, so hopefully everything's set up um, to be able to sort of do a little walkthrough with you. So um, if we look at the, uh, the project, uh, you see there's not many tracks to it, to be honest. Uh, these top two tracks, uh, one called Beats and the other one is a Choir, these are, I've labelled them in yellow, these are non-peak sounds. So the drum track um, and the choir sounds that I ended up playing um, on the chorus lines towards the end, uh, they don't use peak. Um, I'll, we'll look at the chorus line in just a, in a little while. Um, I'm not going to bother going through the drum track at all. But here we've got the peak sounds, and there's really not that many different sounds that are used on this song. Um, there's a bass, uh, which as you can see is like constant all the way through the whole song. It's sort of like a very simple bass, there's not a great deal to it. Um, and it's basically a li little bit like the skeleton of the song. It's what I hang the rest of the sequences and the chords and the riffs around it on top of. So uh, that'll be the first thing that we look at. Other than that, um, there is a sequence that gets played uh, on sort of three separate occasions. Um, there is a second uh, bass sequence. Um, it's actually split out into two tracks uh, because I very slightly changed the, um, the settings on the patch um, later on in the song. It's basically exactly the same sequence, same riff, same notes, um, same fundamental patch, but I just opened up the filter a little bit to just give it a little bit more drive uh, later on in the song, which is why it's split out into uh, two different uh, lanes, if you like, in Cubase. Uh, other than that, I've got this pink uh, track here, which is the chords that I play. Um, and I'll show you what uh, patch I created for those uh, in a while. And then there's only one other track, it's the bottom one, and it's basically the lead that I play. I mean, quite a big part of this song is the lead. Uh, and um, so it's just one more track. Uh, obviously a variety of dis different sequences are playing that lead um, but just one patch for it so we'll go through the patches one by one um, and then and hopefully you'll see how really quite simple they are um, and how quite similar they are to one another um, but that's really not what's important what's important is putting them all together um, in a way that sounds good in, in a song and that's really what it comes down to so alright so let's have a look at the uh, the the bass track, sort of the fundamental sequence that gets played all the way through. Now what I wanted to do with this one, it's a very very simple sequence. Um, because of this another camera here right next to me, I'm a bit skewed with my keyboard. I'm not going to be able to play the exact notes um, here to demonstrate the song because I can't get at the keyboard because of tripods and things like that. But I will play some notes so you can hear. Um, but I wanted this first opening sequence to be quite big, quite in your face, uh, really quite a sort of like a nice, strong, analog sounding uh, sequence uh, because it's going to be the first thing you hear. Um, and if you hear something that's like, like a damp squib, you're going to go, OK, fine, thanks very much, and switch off. So I wanted it to be fairly big, fat, impressive. Um, what I do basically, I mean, when I've been doing the videos with the Model D, there are no presets, there's no ability to save anything. So it's it's literally create a single patch, get it to sound like you 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 know you want it to be, um, and then uh, record the audio. Uh, if it's a, a simple arpeggio or a simple riff, then then repeat it over and over and over again. Grab some f sort of like literally audio footage. 
um, so that I can come back and sort of chop that up and use that in the song that I want to, to, to put together. I might not know, and I probably don't know at the time exactly how the song's going to play out. Um, but obviously with a peak uh, or any other synth where you have the ability to save presets, it's fantastic because it's, I can save it, I can come back to it. And for every single track in every single song that I make, I will save um, the settings of each of those uh, tracks, each of those patches to its own preset in the synth so that I can come back to it. Very rarely will I not do that. If I've got an existing patch and uh, all I'm doing is just tweaking one setting like uh, adding some reverb or tweaking the filter or something like that, then I won't create a new uh, preset just for that sound. But as you can see in Cubase, uh, well it's not very obvious, but uh, when I actually record the audio I've just got a note of the patch name uh, that I've saved it against. So this is in uh, Bank D, it's number 13. So if we go to that and I just press uh, this allow record on the MIDI, so when I press the keyboard, there you go, so we're hearing it. So this is the bass sound. If I just actually uh, just press play and I'm right at the beginning, you'll hear what it actually sounds like in the song. down here somewhere. There you are, I can just about get it. Alright, so how is that uh, patch made up? Um, some things are obvious on the peak when you go to a preset um, as to what the settings are, and some things clearly aren't, and it involves a fair amount of sort of like twiddling of knobs and sliders and seeing, just touching them, just seeing, you'll get instant feedback in the display as to what the actual the current patch setting is. Uh, whereas you will see that there are, you know, there's plenty of LEDs so you can see what certain settings are. So I can see immediately that it's all, all three oscillators are set to the same uh, range and they've got the same uh, waveform, so they've got a sawtooth. Uh, as to whether I'm using all three oscillators or not, I need to just tweak the mixer settings in each one, 255, 255, 121. So the top two uh, oscillators are both mixed full together, and then the third one is mixed a little bit quieter. Uh, in terms of the tuning, okay, so the second oscillator is not detuned in any way, shape or form, and the third one is very slightly detuned. So I've got two oscillators tuned together, third one slightly detuned and a little bit softer in the mix. Um, if I go to the voice menu, okay so we can see immediately unison is set to two so I'm basically using two voices per note um, and if I go to the next page you'll see the mode is mono. I think, I mean, all of these apart from the chord um, sequence are, are mono so that when I play, play two notes I get that sort of like the normal behaviour of a monophonic synthesizer. Um, and the other giveaway, the fact that it's in unison mode is that every time I press a note I can see that there are there are two two of the voices playing. So if you go back to that front page, uh, unison set to two, there's no detune between those two voices. I'm just purely relying on the third oscillator being very slightly detuned. Um, but you'll see that the spread is set to 127, that's the maximum value, which means I am spreading in the stereo field as wide as I can with the sound to make it big and fat. Other than that, if we go to the oscillator page, we at the very front, uh, in my f previous video, the very first video I did about the Novation Peak um, and about trying to sort of like emulate analog sounds, um, I talked a little bit about divergent drift and I've got them set here so that there's a little bit of uh, divergence and drifting between the oscillators um, to give a little bit of, not detune, but that kind of, um, kind of slight randomness and warmth to uh, the sounds, uh, less clinical. So uh, three oscillators, all on a sawtooth. Sawtooth is my very, very favorite waveform to use for a lot of sounds that I do. Um, 
there's clearly uh, an envelope involved. I won't go into all the settings, but there is an amplifier envelope and there's also a filter envelope going on. The filter is set to 12 dB, so that's two pole filter. It's got a, a really nice sound to it. the envelope depth on the filter as you can see it's set to 36 so there's a fair amount of um, the mod envelope being used to to modulate the filter uh, a little bit soft there's a little bit of a soft attack to it the value is 14 so that's just taking the edge off of the sound it's just making it like a nice soft sort of brassy sound and then there's going to be a decay 65 it's set to uh, and a little bit longer release and the sustain is sort of like a little bit more than halfway so there's a sort of a, there's a gradual uh, fall off um, to the, the filter envelope that I'm using but there's clearly some reverb that I'm using as well uh, that's the output levels 21 and then in terms of the time 90 I'm using that quite a lot um, for just a uh, so sort of like at two o'clock um, for a nice bit of reverb. Any chorus? No, no chorus. So it's a really quite simple patch. Um, it's getting its fatness from the fact that there are three oscillators there and it's a unison, so I'm using two um, voices per note. Okay, so then if we come back to Cubase then, um, the next sound is this little sequence that starts to play. I'll actually just uh, move to it and just play it so you can hear what I'm talking about. It's actually two sequences, but using the same patch. Okay, so that is using 16. Let's go back to patch and find number 16, D16. It's actually very similar. I probably based it off of that other patch that I've just showed you. Um, it's again, it's using three sawtooths, same oscillator, um, octave ranges. Uh, let's just turn record on on the MIDI so we can hear it. A little bit quacky, so I, I've, I've fiddled with the mod envelope on the filter. Uh, it's still the same 12 dB, so I'm pretty sure that I based this off of that other patch, just tweaked it very slightly, and then resaved it. There's much more echo to it. Echo, reverb, sorry. reverb um, still no chorus so if we go into the voice it's again it's uh, unison 2 I've got a little bit of detune and a little bit of spread or a medium 50% amount of spread there um, same divergence and drift in terms of oscillators Very good for a bass as well. Maybe you want to take some of that reverb off. So that's the second uh, track, the second patch that I put together. If we just listen to them both together, I mean it's a slow sequence, so I can get away with adding quite a bit of reverb to it, give it a little bit of a uh, background warmth. Okay, so the next. Uh, sound that kicks in is the chords. The drums kick in as well, but let's now listen to the chords, or let's have a look at the, the patch. It's interesting the comments that I had for um, the day one song. Uh, someone was mentioning how uh, 
digital the the, the chord sound sounds it does sound digital um, but actually I was really quite try hard to recreate an old analog tangerine dream uh, it's like string machine type of sound so um, uh, let's have a look it's 15 patch number 15 actually you can call it TD strings there you go so if I um, just enable record and then we can hear it bags and bags of reverb in there long release there's a slow phasing to it and as you can see uh, from the front panel square wave, square wave and sawtooth so I don't know whether that's so what I'm going to have to do is just twiddle these yeah so the third oscillator is actually not in the mix at all so I'm not using that third oscillator uh, that's set to 249 and this one is 255 so maximum volume on the first oscillator just slightly less than max volume on the second oscillator both using square waves and if I go and f just tweak the shape so that one's set to plus 39 so there's a bit of pulse width in there and that was set to 62. So they are basically set at two different, you know, they're not square square, they're uh, they're, they're shifted um, and there's, there's quite a bit of pulse width change, whatever the phrase is for that, uh, on both of those, which is why you're getting that phasing in between them. Let's just check the chorus. Okay, so I've got uh, a fair amount of chorus on here as well, so I'm gonna just take that off that's what the sound is like without any chorus. You've got that slow phasing. But it's quite harsh and clean. So that's where the little bit of chorus uh, comes in and adds to the movement. Now it's not quite so clean and hard. So chorus is in there, uh, yeah there's a fair amount of reverb, don't believe there's any modulation, that's set to zero, uh, they're all set to zero depth so there's no modulation going on um, in this at all, very very simple, just the two oscillators, a little bit of chorus added to it. In terms of the filter, it's on a bandpass. Um, setting uh, 24 dB filter but bandpass setting so it's up here at 157 about 1 o'clock ish Although that does sound lovely, I wanted this sound to be quite uh, bright uh, to sort of contrast the, the fairly sort of like mellow um, sequences that were going on in the song. So um, let's just play. In fact, what I'm going to do is just uh, solo the string uh, audio. Just two sort of partial chords, two note chords being played there. Um, and I use the exact same sound a bit later on when we kick into the, um, the chorus. Exact same sound. Which I think is... Very, very simple. Um, now later on in the song, when there's a lot going on, it's getting a bit louder and there's a, the lead playing all over the place, um, that uh, chorus line does kind of get lost. Those chords get lost a bit. Um, and it's at that point that I um, 
decided I wanted to add something to it. Um, and what I really would have liked, because it's a sort of a standard 70s kind of sound, is to have a, a Mellotron uh, type of chord. Um, and I did try and get um, a Mellotron sound out of the peak, and I failed dismally to do so, and I was kind of running out of time. Um, it's a shame, there are a whole load of uh, wavetable um, waveforms in here. So uh, there's a couple here, if I just go through them. There's a couple here which I thought had been perfect. There's one called Vox Oo-E, uh, and another one called Vox Ya-E. Um, I'm guessing you can change uh, the formant by fiddling around with the shape amount. Well, that's what I was trying to do, and I really wasn't happy with the results I was getting. Um, I don't want to go into now why um, I wasn't getting what I wanted. I think an investigation into these uh, these wavetables uh, is probably going to be a good subject for another video, um, and I will definitely do that. Um, but I was not able to uh, get a kind of choiry, melotrony kind of sound using the wave uh, tables here. So um, I ended up resorting to a uh, sample library. Well, it's a synthesizer, Omnisphere. Omnisphere is a fantastic uh, software-based synthesizer. It uses a heck of a lot of samples behind it. And I ended up just using a very simple choir sample. So if I just highlight that row, there you go. I think it was over that, that register. Um, so let's just jump to that point. It's going to be real loud because there's a whole lot going on with the, the, the lead, etc. But this is basically... Yeah, and you can hear it tail off there. Um, it's really quite subtle. It's not really uh, a standout sound of its own. I played the exact same chords that I was playing with uh, the peak, um, and I'm still playing them as you can see down here. I'm just uh, putting the um, the choir sound over the top on top of it, so um, you hear the two things, to, to the two sets of sounds and chords together. Okay, so we've done the bass, uh, the sequence. Now there is another um, bass line that kicks in after a while in the song and then ends up really playing for the rest of the song. And this is actually my favorite bass line. I, uh, I'm not gonna say I stole it from Tangerine Dream, but I really, really love uh, some of the, the, you know, the, the bass sequences that Tangerine Dream um, put together for their songs. Um, and this one is a classic Tangerine Dream sounding, um, descending, walking bass line. It's basically, uh, well I can't play it yet, let's just go down to it. It's basically a, oops, let's turn off the Omnisphere. Ah, sorry, I need to move to the sound. Let's go to the patch, 12. It's very recognisably a Tangerine Dream style of downward walking sequence. Um, and what I really like about it is that you can then offset uh, that bass line against a lead or some other sequence that's playing. And and if there's like suitable gaps in the in the two sequences, uh, how you overlay them, you can end up having like the lead talk to the bass and the bass is talking back to the lead again. And that's the kind of sort of thing that I ended up trying to do uh, with this song. Um, I was playing it down at another octave down. It's a very simple uh, patch. Um, 12 let's have a quick look at it so I've called it Moog Moog Square so I based it off of another patch that I put together as you can see <coughs> all three oscillators are set to a square wave and 128 128 128 all three oscillators are mixed equally together um, let's have a little look at the shape 
Okay, so this one's set to plus five. This one's set to plus six. Oops, I just played with it. And this one's set to plus seven. So they're all very, very similar in terms of their pulse width, but very, very slightly different to one another. Um, there's no sustain. So in terms of uh, detune, none there, very slightly plus two there. So that's the kind of standard thing that I did across uh, most of the patches. Just detune one of the oscillators very, very slightly, uh, just to give that a little bit of a sort of like a movement to the, to the sound, a little bit of sort of analogy feel to it. Uh, if we go to oscillator, the page one, again, the standard divergent drift that I have on all of them. And if we go to voice, this time to really make it nice and beefy, I've got unison three. And as you can see, three voices are playing per note. A little bit of detune, ten. And quite a lot of spread to it. So I'm trying to make it a nice, big, fat, beefy bass sound. Let's just move off of it. I'll go back onto it again. So in terms of the envelopes, no sustain at all, quite a fast drop off in terms of a decay. So in Cubase, um, I end up splitting this same uh, sort of like walking descending uh, sequence onto two tracks. And I kind of mentioned that at the beginning of the video. I did that because um, here I am playing this patch exactly as it is and then here you can see by my labeling here very efficient I'm using the same patch but F equals 85 so what I've basically done is open up the uh, the filter a bit so it's currently okay so it's currently set to 51 and I need to go down to start moving it and then later on I use it up at 85 So the reason why I do that is that um, at the point where I'm playing the uh, the choruses here and then later here in the song, um, the lead is playing um, quite loudly. It, it's quite a complicated lead. There's a lot going on, and I was feeling that the the bass line was kind of getting lost and drowned out in the song, and I wanted it to to come forward a bit. Now rather than just turn the volume up. Um, I actually wanted to make it a little bit brighter because the lead sound is probably the, the brightest of all of the, uh, the mono uh, patches that I'm using here. So it's it's fundamentally the same patch, just two different slight uh, filter settings, um, and that's that. Okay, so uh, all right, so we've done that bass, we've done the chords already. So the only other patch really to um, take a look at is the one for the lead. And let me just click record on one of those. So it's 14. Now you'll see in Cubase that I have got it spread over three audio tracks. Uh, the reason I did that was just purely because of different uh, volume and panning settings between the two. So when I come in to do this, the chorus, which is this one and this one here, what I've basically done is taken the same uh, audio recording um, and I've split it across two uh, audio tracks. And those audio tracks are this one here, fully panned to the left, and this one here, fully panned to the right. The slightly different uh, volume settings. Um, but in terms of the uh, 
audio tracks themselves, you'll see here there's a very slight delay uh, that I've set on the when the audio plays. Um, this one's at the zero, so it plays when I expect it to. This one has got a very slight delay to it. It just comes in 35 milliseconds later. So it's a standard trick of taking a single monophonic sound, splitting it across the, the stereo field, wide into each uh, you know left and right channel and then with just a very slight uh, delay between them actually playing you get this sort of feeling of, of, of it being a bigger sound um, than it really is. Um, so that's really all I've done um, in terms of splitting it out like that. But it's the same patch playing throughout. Um, 14 Um, lots of uh, sustained, re uh, sorry, release going on, and a load of reverb added to it. Uh, is there any chorus? There's a little bit of chorus. If I take the chorus out, is basically just fattening it up um, so I just fattened it up just a little bit uh, in terms of voice it's two unison so two voices are playing per note no detune between them widespread wide, spread, wide uh, stereo spread which obviously worked here and then here I am splitting it myself anyway um, what else in terms of oscillate, so that, yeah, it's mono, it's set up as mono is normal. In terms of oscillate, it's the same diversion drift setting. Uh, it's three um, square waves, plus five, plus six. Oh, have I done this already? Plus seven, I've done this already. Sorry, I'm repeating myself. There's a little bit of uh, LFO2 going on in here. What's happening with it? Uh, let's just go and look at the modulation. There's nothing in the modulation matrix. Um, so it must be... LFO2 depth. Is it on this one? Yeah. So... Set to 18. 18, 19, so just a little bit of vibrato pitch modulation on each of the oscillators. So the way that I uh, came up with the, the lead line was, uh, what I simply did was I would set um, it to repeat, let's say at this point here, here, to uh, here, so it's set up to repeat, um, let me just mute the lead and then you'll see what I'm talking about. And I'll just play this. Um, and then alongside that, noodle just noodle over it um, get the feel of some things going on just make it up to go along basically um, and then I would just take that part that I've uh, looped around there and repeated 
and just spread it out for a good five ten minutes um, on the on the sort of like the, the timeline here so that I could then just hit record um, and just record the MIDI notes I'm playing and then come and then just just play those noodlings play the good ones that I liked see if I can string some together and I just basically uh, tried different stuff and came out with a lead line like that that's basically what I did so I did it first for this uh, kind of section and then I would do a similar thing for the the chorus line section same thing just play that over and over again and noodle away at it So, um, and then once I've got those MIDI sequences, then just cut them to the right size um, and put them into the track. Uh, and that's really all I did. So it's actually, um, in terms of the tracks that I've uh, put together on a video so far, this has been the most, um, it sounds the most complicated, and that's because of the lead that's going on and the different riffs and the different sequences that I'm just like playing, sort of like almost ad hoc. Um, but in terms of the uh, the different patches uh, and the variation between them, very very similar. They're basically some sawtooth based patches uh, and a couple of um, square wave patches. Not really using uh, a vast variety of, of, of wave types um, or modulations going on at all. Keeping it really 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 simple. Um, because for me, uh, that's the best way for me to work is to. Um, you know, trying to come out with the music and come out with the melody uh, and, and if I get bogged down too much in terms of you know making a sound that sounds technically fantastic how the hell did you make that then I'm probably not making music um, so anyway that's uh, a quick run through of uh, the song uh, next time round in the video I'll have something new for you to hear uh, and it, we'll go through those sounds and, and see what you think uh, in the meantime thanks very much for watching